on. You ready? Yep, I'm ready. Let's get it. Welcome back to another episode of the Will Hill Show. Today we got another one of my, uh, I like to call them football friends. Is you know, and it's slowly becoming more of a more of a family. Brew, if you want to introduce yourself to the people. How y'all doing? My name is Torian Bruton. Uh, just been playing football with Will for I don't know about ten. Man, yeah, it's coming up, yo. Yeah, about a long up. time, about ten years. So backyard football in Chicago. That's how we stay uh, brotherhood, stay family around out here. So yeah, I've been knowing Will for a long time. That's how we became brothers and family. So yeah. Man, Brew is highly regarded as one of the best receivers out here on the street football I used to be. circuit. <laughs> I mean, how how did you start playing football? Uh, man, I used to always be the youngest. I'm the youngest of all my siblings, so uh, it's I got one brother, two sisters, and we grew up on 111 and Green. Um, and I used to always have uh, older guys that used to play football, basketball. I used to always go in the backyard and just watch them do it. And right. then one day they was playing basketball, they just hit. They threw me the ball like, come on, play. And then it was the same with football. When I moved to my new neighborhood, uh, we was playing football with the older guys. And we was playing fumble, rooski, killer man, whatever, smear the queer, whatever y'all call it. Uh, they just threw me the ball, and it was just I just started scoring. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got good. And then I went through a rough patch when I went to Morgan Park. And uh, that's a whole other story. But, yeah. I mean, so how, how did you become Mr. Route U? So when I went to Morgan Park, I'm, yeah, I was, as y'all can see, I'm the smallest person out here. Uh, <laughs> I'm, now, I'm, I was always, I ain't grown to college. I'm about 5'10", 5'11", 160 on a good day. Uh, when I went to college, when I got to college, I was 5'7", 5'8", 135 on a good day. <laughs> but so when I was at Morgan Park, my freshman and sophomore year, I didn't play football my freshman year because I, was, I wanted to focus on school, get my grades up, whatever. Uh, I went, and I and then my sophomore year, the, the summer going into uh, sophomore year, I went to try for the football team. One of the football coaches really didn't mess with me, just tried to kept dogging me out, tried to give me a T-bone helmet, the one with the, the little <laughs> thing right there. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm real respectful until you disrespect me. So I was, I'm like, coach, I can't rock that helmet. I'm, I'm, I, I was playing DB at first. I'm like, uh, I'm a DB. I'm, I'm one of you. You know what I'm saying? He was the DB coach. He just didn't mess with me. So, uh. I ended up getting another helmet. They gave me a helmet. It, it, it was a decent helmet, but it had the little linebackers and fullbacks. You'd have it had the U at the top. Right. But, I mean, I took what it was because it was my first time playing equipment football. So, uh, they just didn't mess with me, long story short. I played my sophomore year. I was uh, getting in and out of games, played here and there. But uh, every Sunday, um, varsity at Morgan Park, this is how Morgan Park got good. They would do they, they um, conditioning on the weekends, on a Sunday. And then so when Monday rolled around, they could do their practices. Uh, every Sunday, my god dad would take me out on the field, on the soccer field, while they was running and conditioning, uh, and I would run routes, and I would work on my hands, I would work on everything, and, uh, and it's funny because when I used to, sometimes when I used to walk up to the practice field, the varsity Morgan Park football players would be walking out, right. and then they'd be laughing, they'd be like, you getting better, bro, you trying to practice, bro, trying to get up here with us, and i just laugh at them, and you know what I'm saying, because I'm little, <laughs> so, and I just got better, and then, um, it was one Morgan Park practice in the summertime, I just, uh, Spurlock wasn't messing with me. I, we was getting killed by Maine South. I was one of the littlest receivers on the team, but I used to stay on his hip. You know, if a backup quarterback, I ain't no quarterback, but I used to stay on my coach hip, try to get in. I'm like, Coach, can I get in? Right, you got to be the first yeah, thing yeah, he sees yes, yes, when he get ready yes, to put somebody yes. else in. And then he, wasn't, he, he still wasn't messing with me. So, like, and he was like, he was trying to make a statement. He was like, a couple of y'all going to get cut. And if anybody, anybody know, you go to a public school, you can't get kicked off the team unless you, like, bad as hell or something. Yeah, I'm not that. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I had the GPA to bring everybody up. So, <laughs> uh, he, I guess he wants to make a statement, and he kicked me and a couple other people off the team. And then, uh, like, uh, that day, I went home. Uh, I had all my equipment and stuff. I went home, was crying, eat my dinner. My best friend, who uh, you, y'all, you know him, uh, Adrian, the light skin with the freckles, the one, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the one that used to quarterback for us all the time. He was, uh, he went to Luther South. Him and his big brother, Luther South, 80, uh, 85th and kids. They about to close down, turn to Pete's now. But private school, uh, <laughs> he was like, he called, he was like, uh, how was football practice? I'm like, bro, I just got kicked off the team, blah blah blah. He was like, uh. He was like, man, come up to uh, Luther South and watch us practice, bro. I'm like, man, I, don't, I, don't, I right. think I'm going to go play baseball now or something because <laughs> that was my first sport. So uh, he was like, nah, bro, we might not be as good as you, but ju- just shit, just come up there and watch us play, uh, practice. Go up to Luther South. Morgan Park is 80 motherfuckers up there. Luther South is 20 people on a good day to come <laughs> to practice. You know what I'm saying? Small private school. So uh, they had varsity on one side. They had JV on the other side. I had on my flip-flops, you know, any Chicago dude chilling in flip-flops in the summer, especially after. 
right. I football was, practice, it was a party yeah, uniform. Yep. I, I was, I was up there with my flip flops on. My, my best friend Adrian was like, show them how to run a route. I'm like, bro, I ain't got no shoes on. He was like, just walk through it. So I just ran it in my flip flops. And then like my coach, Charlie Clark looked over and he was watching the varsity. He was looking at me like, you on the football team? You play football? I'm like, well, I was on Morgan <laughs> Park, but uh, I just got kicked off. But uh, y'all trying to put me on y'all team? What's up? I literally said them words, and uh, it was love ever since. I asked my grandma because she uh pay for my educate help pay for my private school education, and right. so I'm like, I explained. I'm like, y'all pay for my education now. Y'all not gonna have to pay for it in the future. And I end up, you know, getting a little scholarship to play a D two, and then went did my little thing. So that's how it happened. That's what's up. What'd you like more, a receiver or a DB? Receiver. DB, I, I, I could play DB now, and it's fun, but, like, y'all just like catching. I like to, you know, yeah. stare somebody <laughs> down, talk a little stuff. You know, yeah. It's a, you get more of the glam. So, I always like to see when you, uh, <clears throat> I want to say, like, go on your sports rants. It ain't really rants. Yeah. Your sports compared. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So, uh, no, for real, he be having some insightful ass shit. Like whenever it's like a big like sports debacle going on, and I'm I like, stand on it. I be like, I'm gonna wait to see what Bruce say, <laughs> and then I'm gonna formulate my opinion. So, which sport would you say you like the most, like professionally, uh, oh. as as a fan? Football all day. All yeah, day, yeah. All day. You, you 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 foreseen Brady winning this? Man, I, honestly, I, I I I don't know if you saw my Facebook status. I I when I I went to college in Missouri, so I've got a best friend that's born and raised K KC. I I knew <laughs> Kansas City and St. Louis on a Sunday in Missouri watching football. You might as well just turn your Xbox on back then. Cause like <laughs> think about it, like I was after what oh from oh nine to whenever they start getting good, they it was just bad football to watch, and I seen them get out the mud. So I really wanted them to win. I mean, but I ain't, but I they wasn't ready. So I. Tom Brady the GOAT, so you can't be mad at it. But. Hey, right. This was the year that, you know, we was to see if it was Tom Brady or the system. Yeah. And, and, and he, he answered that shit. He proved, <laughs> yeah, he proved. He, he showed people all the way. It's not a, He's not a system guy. He, he, he can do whatever. I don't know, man. My argument, when, especially when it comes to quarterbacks, to me, as a, a lineman, mm -hmm. I say it always start with the O-line. Oh, you can yeah. give a terrible quarterback six seconds in the pocket, and he can do what Tom oh, Brady yeah. does. Exactly. Like <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I agree that 100%. Because, uh... Yeah, because if they would have had, like, my best friend, he told me if, if they would have had at least one of their linemen, they could have made a little bit difference because they, they, they had a stat. He, Patrick Mahone ran 497 yards before he even right. threw a pass. That's that's 500 yards. That's five football fields long he running before he threw a pass. Before, so, right. Yeah. So I was talking about what could they have done different, right? Uh -huh. um, I guess this is my perspective, right? So since obviously your line aren't doing you any services, mm -hmm. right? You bring in a tight end. Mm -hmm. You go double tight, right? Double tight. And you, yeah. you, you let Kelsey chip and go. Yeah. And um, short passes. Yeah, and then they was playing. They was playing far off, too. So, like, they was playing, like. I mean, because that's, that's they, 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 a deep threat-ass yeah, team. You know that, right? Yeah, they, they kept an eye on uh, Tyreek Hill. You have, yeah. you have to. Because they said, they said we gave him them 200 yards the first game. And he said, Ty Bowles said, we're going to give him nothing this game. That's what you uh, have to. White said. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that was good. So, I'm like. I often wonder, I'm like, yo, if I can sit here and watch it and make this assumption, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, how come these professional coaches aren't making adjustments? They get stuck in their head, and that's, that's crazy because um, when I was coaching, I was coaching um, Lynn Bloom a couple years ago, a few like three years ago, and um, we was playing, I think, was it Walter Payton, and it was like a big conference game. We lost this game. We couldn't go to the playoffs. If we won the game, we were still in the playoff race. Uh, they It was it. It was like, hmm. I want to say it was third and one, and the DBs was playing 19 yards off. <laughs> I said, Coach, run a screen. Like, you know, tell, we had two All-State receivers. I said, just tell them, turn around and catch it. All you got to do, you're playing 19 yards off. It, right. it don't matter. Like, you ain't got to make a move. You can just fall forward and get the first. <laughs> he said, I was like, Coach, run a screen. I'm not running the damn ball on third and one. I was like, hey, <laughs> coaches really get stuck in their own ways, and they don't want to change it. They be trying to prove a point. But no, I, I feel like uh, when I used to play the game um, NCAA, uh, I used to when I used to I used to play with Pittsburgh, and you know Pittsburgh not the best schools. Right. You get two, three star recruits, so I had to change my offense every time. You know, what I'm saying every depending year. Depending on yeah, what yeah, you depending had. on what right. you got. So like, you, I think they should have just took it what they had, and they were just too stuck in their ways, and they wasn't ready. 
And another thing, they need a new punter. That every time you punt the ball, <laughs> they start at the thirty. They start. They literally start at the fifty yard line every time. Almost so every time. You giving right. Brady a short field. It's over with. Yeah. Nah, man. I'm, I'm like, yo. I, I want to get into sport. coaching. I want. I want to try my hand at coaching. I, I, I think I. I think I'll be good at give it. Give me. I'm get, like I said. I'm getting this master's degree. Give me. Give me some time, and we are gonna take a south side school over. I'm. I'm looking at like something like Brooks or something. Like. I mean, it's whatever. I, I, yeah. We'll talk off camera about yeah, that. That's that's mm-hmm. different. Um, shit, you getting your masters? Yeah. What's, what's up with that? What, what you think your masters in? Masters in uh, middle school education. Trying to be a social studies teacher. Uh, trying to just change the South Side of Chicago for real. Be a modern day superhero every day. Trying to like change these boys' lives. I work in the school. I've been working in schools ever since I graduated college. So, uh, what's that? What am I? I graduated college when I was 22. I'm 30. Eight years. But yeah. <laughs> so, educating that. And I, my degree is in uh, criminal justice. So, like, I wanted to be a police officer at first. I wanted to be an FBI agent and all that, like, fancy I stuff. Just you can take the Go ahead. I want to be, like, a uh, FBI agent and stuff like that. I want to be, like, an FBI agent, a modern-day superhero, because, like, on my block, the block that I grew up on, it's, like, every three houses a fireman or a police officer. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? That's what I grew up seeing. My best friend Adrian, his his dad's uh was a retired police officer, so that's what I wanted to do. My godfather was a uh, fire uh, fire retired T- CFD, so like that's what I wanted to do. But like when I got out of college, I'm like, nah, this is <laughs> trying to take all these police tests and uh going on these interviews and all this other stuff. It wasn't what I wanted. It it would have wasn't what I wanted. So working in schools really changed my mind. I worked with I worked with every type of child like. Special needs, we call them uh, uh, diverse learners now. We want to call them SPED. <laughs> so diverse learners, uh, at-risk kids, you know, the wild, bad yeah, bad kids, right. at-risk, uh, white, black, polka dot, everything, Hispanic, so you everything. Think, I mean, with that being said, what do you think is the problem with CPS? What's, what's, what's wrong with the mm. educational system? Uh, so now the problem is we too far behind because the, the e-learning. I feel like, it, it, like you know, everybody knows they're saying take a village to raise a child, and uh, the some schools, I, some schools got it. Some schools can. You, the village is good. You, your teachers and your your uh, your parents work together. But in some schools, you go in some schools, uh, pre pandemic, and if the ch- if a parent calls, yeah, if the teacher calls a parent and uh, tells the parent that the child did something, the child, the parent gonna reside with the child. And, right. You know. Well, what hold I'm on, hold on. Let me talk to my kid. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, exactly. And well, then, he said he didn't do it. Exactly. And <laughs> it, it goes like that. And then like. It's everybody against the teacher at that point. So, like, sometimes I feel like we all got to band together and, you know what I'm saying, work together. Because it's, it's a new age. We can't – we don't talk to – we not the same as – we not we don't raise the kids how we were raised, I don't think. So, I think that's a difference. You think we softer? I think we have to be now. Like, look at the Super Bowl commercials. Like, you, you, <laughs> like think about it. Like, the world is just that much more softer. You can't um, – you can't do nothing now. You can't talk to kids. No, you can't – like – I know Adrian Peters overdid with whooping his kid, but, like, he was being a father, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying what he did was exactly right, but, you know, the whelps or something, but, like... I would say, yeah, Lee, Lee, Lee Yeah, no, no, no was, marks, you know what I'm saying? Right, but, like, yeah, uh, right. like being, a, like, some kids do need a whooping, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, or some form of discipline. I don't think we have, like... Now you can't suspend kids at all. When you used to get in fights when I grew up, when we grew up, when you ten get days. A, ten days automatically. <laughs> if you start the fight, you get ten days. If you didn't start the fight, you get three or something like that. And then... Now you get in a fight, they get in school suspension if they get a dean, if we have a dean in the school or whatever, and that don't help them. And yeah, uh, school you know, suspension, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I went, I went to the J, and the shit was wild. Yeah, I already know. Like niggas used to pull the fire alarm because mugs was trying to hide in their classroom. Oh, I remember working party. Yeah, they used to do they that pull crazy. the fire alarm, so everybody have to come outside, mm-hmm, and, and then outside. Watch, they everybody go outside and just watch the fight or yeah, whatever. Yo, know, the shit was kind of like a. <laughs> Like a boxing match. Yeah, we we um, all knew it was coming. Like, oh shit, it's Thursday. Oh, they for the fight. <laughs> I didn't put my book bag in my locker. We finna get out early. What's that mean? Say it's a, it's gotta be you gotta be a wild child to be in high school and be one to jump and some jump on somebody at seven thirty in the morning. Right. Like, That's crazy though. <laughs> like really wanna jump on somebody. Woke up and chose violence. Right. Like. <laughs> Hey, bitch a pop tart and then one to bite somebody, hit somebody in the mouth. <laughs> right. That's that's crazy. <laughs> no, nah, that shit's insane. Um you think the educational system is miss, missing uh, the male aspect when it comes to teaching? Oh, for sure. And that's crazy because I'm in this program, the program I'm in, uh, GYO. I mean, I'm about to promote that. But, uh, hey, throw it they, out there. They say uh, if you are want to be education, GYO, grow your own, Illinois. I don't got the shit on me. I usually keep it on my phone. <laughs> but, like, uh, uh, they pay for, this, pay for you if you want a bachelor's or a master's. Uh, if you need to hook up, hit me up. But, uh, 
Like I'm they I'm I pay five hundred dollars total and that's because they uh they paid my class was a little extra one semester, one term, so I paid five hundred dollars total for my whole degree basically. So think about it. I don't got no student loans, I don't none of that. So Oh shit, that's all a I got in uh, itself. Yeah, there. Yeah, and that's 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 a killer. So once I get this master's over, I'm gonna take Chicago over yeah. All right, we're going to switch gears real quick. Let's it is it. February, Black History Month. Mm-hmm. What does Black History Month mean to you? Everything, man. Uh, I, like, if you ask my daughter, I, I got three kids. If you ask my youngest daughter, uh, she, I'm a, I said, what are you? I'm a beautiful black girl. So, like, I, yeah. I, I, I preach that, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I actually got a, everything. I, I think pretty much everything I wear got usually black history, something like that. Uh, this is Hero. This uh my homie. He's a, He worked for – he's Morgan Park football coach, but uh, – yeah, it's like black on, you know what I'm saying? I got a shirt to say black excellence is a uh, black, I don't know who made it, but like everything I got, is, I try to like keep it in the black community, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's everything to me. Black is beautiful, black is the world, you know what I'm saying? So I feel hey, like. No, for real. And it, like, I feel like we, we, we almost, we as a, a community almost has lost that mm-hmm. at, at some point. And it's like, like damn, y'all, y'all don't realize we all we, all we got. That, that's why. I, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Right. I would say that's why when it comes to this podcast, I only you only see people that I, I'm really like close mm. with. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, like if we reach out to somebody else, somebody want to collab, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, I bring people I'm close with because even though you're not necessarily promoting something, you mm. did just drop some knowledge yeah. on some people. You yep, know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. And so like I always want to promote you know from within, and then you know everything else will come to fruition. Mm-hmm. One thing I did want to say, like uh, I was watching, I was listening to the radio. It was, I think it's the Air Eleven Morning Show. It was like one of four point three or something like that. But uh, I think they was talking about how people was talking about. Why is it Black History Month? Why they don't make it African American History Month? I'm like, oh my God, they need to shut up before. I'm not trying to go take ahead. None. Come I'm on, not, I'm not trying to take none from Indigenous people or minority. They gonna, but they gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? Indigenous People Month or Minority Month. You know what I'm saying? But they don't. They gonna take that away from us automatically because they don't want it to be Black History Month no more. Why is it not African American History Month? But yeah, so yeah, yeah, man, <laughs> yeah, like I don't. Mm. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Just keep it what it is, man, before they take it all the way away from us. Because, you know, it's already short as a month. I, hope, I wish it was a leap year. <laughs> Get our extra day in. I mean, I, I know we, we always, that's one of the things we always say, it's the shortest mm-hmm. month. I, I don't really care. I I, I like the rate tradition, right? Yeah, like, I do agree. And we, it, it could be nothing. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, at all. A week, a I, day, but we got a whole month. You're right. Quite honestly, I, I think it's kind of watered down, though, at this point. I don't think we, we dive deep enough. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, for sure. Because... We already know in the regular history books, black people started slavery. Mm-hmm. And it's like slavery, <laughs> Rosa Parks, Martin Luther yep. King. Oh, wait, hold on, wait. It's like slavery, Frederick Douglass. Yeah, that's the <laughs> then, story. Then man. straight to civil rights, and then Barack Obama. That's, the that, that's it. That's all of black history. It's like, y'all, y'all serious? <laughs> like, <laughs> they got to put some more awareness out there. I mean, it's on the schools, though, too. Because, uh, I mean, it's on the, a lot of the stuff, like it's common core standards. So, like, your, t- your school got to teach certain type of stuff. Right, like, right. But if you go to, like, a charter school, that's why uh, Chicago, a lot of the, you said what's wrong with CPS, a lot of ki- a lot of parents are sending kids to charter schools because, like, charter schools, you can kind of do your own thing there. You can right. make your you own. You got some leeway. Yeah, you can make your own wave and stuff. Like, I want to be African-American teacher history, uh, African-American history teacher at, at when it's all said and done. So I, I want to put that in seventh, eighth grade minds. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to have to ha- have them wait till high school. I had a white African American history teacher. In high well, that's got to be a slap in the face. So yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so like, I want them to see that, see where they come from from me as a black man. You know what I'm saying. I got a full sleeve tattoo. I I, I I love kids to see that. You know what I'm saying. I don't wear a short sleeve shirt every day, but I wear collet when we were pre pandemic every Tuesday tattoos that. You know what I'm saying. Right. And then I, when I was to wear, pull my shirt up, you know, fold it up, and so they can see the tattoo. But you can you can be tatted up. But you can do it in a professional manner. You know, right. I, I, I rock gym shoes, you know, Air Maxes, Jordans all the time. But I still show my young men, you know what I'm saying? I go crazy sock game with some with some uh, Urkel shoes or some, right, some, right, some, right. some bowling type <laughs> shoes, you know what I'm saying? But you still got to learn how to, you know, switch it up. You got to have a different face, you know what I'm saying? And one thing my eighth grade teacher told me, who's an assistant principal now, she told me you got to, she said, you got to be two-faced to live in this life. I said, huh? She said, you can't go around that person and talk to him the same way you talk to your boss. You can't talk to your boss the same way you talk to your mom. You can't talk to your mom the same way you talk to your friends. And I was like, because you know how people like to say, don't be two-faced and stuff like that. But 
and she when she put it in the, in the assay, you got to be a, a person of many faces. So I really, I, I, I thought that was cool. I mean, that's that's just cold yeah. switching, no? Yeah. And like, I always find it funny when people be like, "We shouldn't have to cold switch." Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh bullshit, you got to. bullshit. Like everybody, everybody has a professional voice. You, got you know to. what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to be, because I, I I heard some people make the argument like. Oh, why should I have to, you know, act white to mm, yeah. make those white people? Like that's that's not what it is, though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You, you can still you can still be yourself. I don't I don't I don't care who you are. The moment a black person answers the phone, you know it's a black person. I don't care how professional yeah, I agree. you try to. <laughs> I agree. You try to make your voice. I don't care how cocky. It's a few select people yeah. who can, but for the most part, you cannot. You, know, yeah. you can't take the black out of your voice. And I got a funny story about how I know. Uh, I mean, one first thing first. Just call of duty, mm. nigga. I, you you can sneeze <laughs> and you finna hit the N word a thousand times, bro, a thousand times. Hell no. Nah. Nah, I was playing um, Red Dead Redemption, mm. Red Dead Redemption Two. The online came out. Mm. I was playing it or whatever, and um, I had I had my headset on. I think I was play, playing something with my cousin, mm. and I forgot I had it on. I'm playing online doing the missions, and I said something. And when it first dropped, everybody could see where everybody was. Mm. And all I hear is all the white boys go, wait, 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 I heard something. <laughs> it was a nigger. Where you at? Uh, and so, like, bro, it, it was a whole posse. So, like, I was the only person in this server right. that was not with them. Uh, and so I open up the mini map, bro, and all I see is all the dots <laughs> converging yeah. to where I'm at. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. So we shooting it out. It's me versus, like, 15 uh. people. And on that game, you could uh, get the rope and lasso mm, somebody. Okay. And you could drag them with the horse. And I said, hell no. Nah. Y'all ain't finna dare do, do me on a video game how y'all did my ancestors. Oh. I got off the server. I got off the server. Cut no. it off real quick. <laughs> Smart man. My ancestors did not die for right. me to have this happen to me in a fucking video game. Y'all done lost y'all damn mind. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, um, a lot of people uh, like have like mixed feelings about Black History Month. I've heard black people say that Black History Month is like ineffective. Yeah, yeah. So I, when it comes to the terminology Black History Month, African American History Month, what's what's the difference for you? Like, is there? Do you see a difference in Black and African American? No, nah, no, no. If you got some Black in you, Black like that. Tiger Woods, he Black. Kamala Harris, Black. Yeah, no, we already know yeah. just the drop make yeah, you Black. Yeah, one ten. In the eyes black. of the, the masses. Yeah, so like, <laughs> it ain't no difference to me. So as long as you like, they, we just gotta show more appreciation to it. Like as as a whole, we gotta be more appreciative. I feel like. We, I think it, I, I blame it on technology, honestly, cause like, I, and I blame it on you. You see how fast music dropped back then. Nelly dropped, or uh, that's the first name, pop, pop, pop. <laughs> Nelly, Luda, whoever, any rapper dropped like one album a year. Now you got people dropping five albums of ten mixtapes and albums a year. You don't, have, we don't show appreciation to anything. Uh, technology had moves. Uh, what like if I don't want it like when hap- what happened when that black boy got killed by the the white dudes when he was jogging yeah and they I'm like, I'm here. like that 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 happened and then something else probably happened on the internet and it took out that attention it was oh, over, yeah, it no, was over with it, the internet most definitely yeah. uh, keep our our attention span very it's, short yeah it's terrible um I I'm always uh I guess appreciative when stories like our motto very like mm. stick and we can you know stand behind that and band together and stuff um. But I want to talk about what from now and then, from uh, let's go from civil rights era, uh, mm. Black History Month. We always go talk about Malcolm X, mm. Martin Luther King. When it comes to pushing a co- culture forward, how do you think it has changed from then to now? Mm, so, yeah. I mean, I, I'll let you think. I, I guess I speak my piece. Go ahead. So, yeah, let me think. Um, I guess the the main argument would be that during that time, most people was united. Can't say everybody. Mm. Let's be honest. <laughs> Most people's united and they push the culture a lot further and faster than the way we're doing it now. Now, I don't necessarily find that true. Mm. I think uh, we, right after, let's say, like late 90s, when it come, came to pushing the culture, we took a nice little deep dive. But like after that, we've seen a steady increase yeah. in supporting our community. You know what I'm saying? Trying to keep the dollars black. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like. Slowly but surely, we're going to get to where we should be. Uh, I ain't going to say where we can be because the sky's the limit, mm, quite oh honestly. Yeah. But uh, w- where we should be. We got a love. I got a, I got a friend that sell houses. Like I look at his Facebook every day. He sell. He live in the DMV, uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia. Uh, he sell houses from 
100,000 to a million dollars. And like, he, 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 he always say, we got to buy the block. We got to buy the, buy, buy up the hood, buy, make the hood black again. You know yeah, what I'm saying? The block. Yeah. So like, we got to, and we got to invest our dollars, like you said, back into the black, the black dollar. So we got to re- recirculate our dollars and we got to start with the kids. We got to let our kids know what they can do. Every kid don't got to go to college. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to push that on them because. I'm a firm believer you ain't got to go out. My, my my father's a carpenter. He's a retired carpenter. At one point in time, made six figures. You're doing that. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. what you need college for? A plumbing, electrician. like. But, like, we got to start our own business and keep them running. We can't start a, a jerk uh, chicken, uh, a jerk rap place, you know what I'm saying, here. Shoot it up. And then, and then, and then want to go eat Subway or, 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 you know what I'm saying, all this other stuff. So we got to keep the black dollars in, in our community. So how we could do that, we got to start young. We got to start it with the schools. You think it'll ever be another Black Wall Street? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I don't know. That's tough, know, boy. Yeah. That's tough. Nah, it's tough. I'm ignorant to all that, though. Like that, uh, the Wall Street and the. No, I mean, you know, Black Wall Street, right? Uh-huh. Uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't how New York Wall Street went. Black Wall Street was just. Uh, man, what what was it? What city was that in? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, it was Tulsa, yeah. So basically, it was a neighborhood that was thriving, mm. completely independent of the white people, mm-hmm. and that was considered Black Wall Street. They had their own banks, okay, I'm finna go everything, bro. They got a documentary or something. Like yeah. That? Oh yeah, cause you know they. Oh well, shit. Obviously, you don't know, but uh, white people blew it up. Oh, okay, I did. Yeah. okay. I, I, and when you said that, I was, just, I was, like, was, I was just about to say the bombing thing. Yeah, okay. I, yeah I heard that, about. Okay, now I'm gonna go do my research. Now I know, I know. Yeah, the that's, thing. that's that's Black Wall okay, Street, I got and you. um, you know they 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 blew it up viciously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm about to go. Like you, you know, it's a problem when planes dropping bombs. Yeah, like <laughs> terrible. I knew that. Okay, and like, and to me, that's an important part of uh, Black history. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. they need to should be cemented right there next to. Rosa Park, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta be somewhere. I gotta do my research on it. Yeah, but you know, they don't ever sure. want to really paint white people in a negative light for real. For yeah, real. they got the civil rights. I'm like, all right, look how they y'all got us on camera. We did it. We, did it. we sorry. <laughs> what was you just gonna say? No, I was about to say, look how they, um, I was gonna say, how look how they portray like black athletes and when they tell a story or something like that, say, uh, oh no, when they say, uh, when, when it's like a, a group of black people, they do something like the when the. What was the terror attack on Capitol? I call it terror because they got some terror. It was shit. domestic terror. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what they call it? Uh, Insurrection. Yeah, like they use a different word for white people, but like if it was some some black brothers or some uh, thugs, uh, uh, something like that, heinous crimes or something like that, right. they, they twist the words around so crazy. So like, yeah. I had seen this meme. They depicted uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, as like the uh, X Men. Mm. Uh, Martin Luther King is Professor X, okay, and Malcolm X is Magneto. H- how do you feel it. about that? I think I seen it, but I didn't like look into it because I, I know I scroll past it. Like, I, is one of them got a helmet in the hand? Yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that? yeah, yeah. So let me see. Yeah, it's so deep on so many levels. Break it down to me. That's not. I'm just reading the cap, but like oh, they oh. say it. Like, I mean. To me, I mean, first of all, everything's perspective, right? Well, okay, I get, it. I get it because they they saying Magneto was the rebel. I mean, not Magneto, Malcolm X, the rebel of the, the you know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Martin Luther King is the Professor X. He's a calm guy. I mean, you could say that. You could put uh, you could put Huey P. Newton in the Black Panther Party as Magneto. See, if you want exactly, to, too, but though. like that's that's the thing though. Like that's the, I get the point. Mm-hmm. But it, I feel like there's other people they could have put there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like for that, like 100 percent and. The lack of knowledge, not only from the other side, but within ourselves. <laughs> like, that's, the, that's the thing about that technology, though. People just trying to get a quick like, quick right, stream, right. something like that. You know, quick conversation piece. Nah, so for that, sure. That, that should be it. Um, how do you feel about guns? Honestly, uh, I got, because like, I'm supposed to be criminal justice, I'm criminal justice major. I got my, um, not my concealed carry, the four. I got my four card, but yeah. um, I have a gun, but I don't like because I was going through my criminal justice stuff. Uh, <laughs> but I don't have my my concealed carry. But I am getting. I'm going to get in the next couple, like the next, like well, I'm taking the class soon. But do you feel I, like it's important? Is I I'm honestly doing. now I do. Like I really do with all these carjackings and stuff like that. Yeah, and that and crazy. yeah, that's, that's nuts. And yeah, I, and that stuff happened to 
near home, like near where my grandma and stuff stay, like where some the school I used to work at. So yeah, that's that's crazy. But I feel like it's necessary though. Like uh, long as you you carrying it the right way, you got your. As long as you ain't doing nothing stupid, but you know everybody do something stupid. So. Yeah, no. Nah, but man. I really do feel like it's necessary when I get my children carry. I will be doing it the right way and right. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. have to. You, you, I mean, you're a family man. Yeah, you got you it. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's scary. Somebody to try to take your life, bro. For for a car. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, these, these carjackings are insane. Yeah. Let, let's hit on that real quick though. I wonder, like, where it started, and. Why is it like going on for real? For real? I, it started. It, got, it has to start for like. Uh, so I was ignorant to the uh, when the 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 retired fire uh, man yeah. that got his own western just right around the corner from here. So like right. he um I didn't know he had a the, it was a Hellcat or whatever the the, the big yeah, engine jeep yeah, yeah yeah but they didn't they didn't say that though yeah but so, but the yeah my car he was hiding behind wasn't his yeah my friends let me know like the, the that the the jeep that they was trying to get to they said the engine it was ten thousand twelve thousand alone so yeah. like you flip that that's what it that's what they was trying to get but like. Most of these kids, they young, so they just yeah, trying. They, they just they not, a lot of them not even old enough to drive. They for just real. joy riding, and, and uh, a lot of them, uh, j- they said they crashing the cars a couple streets up and just getting out. Yeah, because they can't handle it. Yeah, so they hit that gas, that hell can't yeah. get the roaring. It's, 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 <laughs> it's over, but I just I, I don't understand it though. Like they you gotta get gotta. It's mm. it's other ways, man, to 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 do dumb shit. Like, come on, like we used to jump. Like I used to jump off trees. My the community I live in, um, grew up in, uh, that I moved to and grew up in. They build. They was building houses over there, so we used to slide up and down dirt hills and stuff. <laughs> and play, have dirt clod wars and stuff we, like that. We was it's, just talking about because it's, cause, it's just on. ways to do. Like you said, ways to have do dumb shit and have fun. Like we was just talking because in the back. Uh, there's a snowbank back there. Mm. He was like, "Yo, they could add that around when I was a kid. We'd be playing on exactly. it." Exactly. Like, yes. <laughs> like, we, it, 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 man, we the kids just don't know fun because, like, in the summertime when we were kids, we walking up and down the street in sweatpants, shorts, and a t-shirt. Now you go outside in the summertime, you see kids in designer jeans, pants that's tighter than they mamas. You know what I'm saying? But and they got a nerve <laughs> to have a gun on them. So, but that's the crazy part. I mean, okay, but then at what point? Is it the the parents or the community? Who's at fault? It's both because communities don't have the resources that they need, and but at the same time we don't have we didn't have a lot of resources either. But you gotta make like, fun, like. But again, technology. You put a fun. You a lot of these people when a baby start crying, put an iPad in front of their place, play Coco oh, yeah. Coco Melon, uh, you know what I'm saying? Then. The big bright lights, they looking at it like this the whole time, and that's what shuts them up instead of you teaching your child how to do something, you know what I'm saying? A lot of these kids don't know how to clean, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. I teach, I was working with kindergarten a couple of years ago. Uh, we got to teach kids how to wipe tables. A lot of kids wiping tables. They don't know how to wipe tables, how to tie their <laughs> shoes. So it's like you got to work. Who's teaching them? So you, it takes a community. It takes a village to raise them. So like you said, it's the community too, so. And we gotta have more resources, like at least a park or something. Do you think uh, so? The way it was then, and the way they do teaching now, uh, the kids like they take care of cleaning the classroom, cleaning up the school. Like they they have to take turns doing. It. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it gives so them a sense of community. They would like American schools would benefit from that. Yes. First off, I, I mean, mean you, you would you would keep pushing like why my kids got to clean up for. You would, uh, you would, but you like, gotta have the right teacher to talk to them and and, and, and play. But you, I mean, it's it's, it's hard to compare accepted. America to anything, bro. America is the <laughs> only goddamn country that uses the imperial system for measurement. So like, <laughs> and it is it's one of the it's one of the dumbest things. Mm. The metric system is easy, bro. It's tens. Everything is in tens. <laughs> imperial system. How, how many inches in a foot? Twelve. Who came up with this? You know, who, who was like twelve? Twelve minutes. Okay, let's stop. We gonna, <laughs> we gonna make that a foot. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, it, none of it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? How often do you have to Google how many liters in a gallon? Right. You know, what I'm saying? all the time. The metric system is simple, but America is so stubborn. We don't want to do that. So it's it's hard to compare, uh, like our culture to other cultures because our culture really isn't influenced by the rest of the world. We are. The ultimate influencers. Yeah. The the rest yeah. of the world kind of follows suit. Um, I mean, 
the rest of the world is kind of breaking away from that, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to their own country finances, mm-hmm. with America being a couple of trillion dollars in debt, oh. which is like insane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, other countries like, oh no, nah, we'll take y'all rap music, but uh, we we gonna do our own books. <laughs> like, <laughs> we don't need y'all help no more. <laughs> we we gonna do our own books. Uh, you ever tra- traveled outside the country? No, I have not. I, and that's crazy because uh, doing martial arts, I was supposed to. We, Fuck, hold like, on, shit. Yeah, let's talk about that <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you practice? Uh, traditional Korean martial arts on 103rd and Western. Uh, Plug it, man. Tell them uh, where they can find you. Traditional Korean martial arts, Cook School of Chicago, 10346 Southwestern, 773-238-6222. But, yeah, you can find us on Facebook. Cook Soul of Chicago, K U K, like you cooking food, S O O L. But uh, yeah, I've been doing that for 20 years. Uh, I'm 30. I've been doing it since I was 10. Uh, my cousin did a he he used to take it before me. He did a flip on me. You know how kids <laughs> jump in the bed, wrestle and, and stuff like that. He flipped me, and he at, at the time my cousin he's my barber. I ain't got no heck of that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he um he probably like six three now. He was shorter than me at the time, but he's my little cousin. But he flipped me, and I got up. I'm like, <laughs> I said, "What you? How you where you learn that from?" He was like, hey, "This, this is like a movie." He was like, "I've been doing martial arts, man." I'm like, "I gotta take that shit." <laughs> uh, um, like I told my mom, I'm like, "If he, I was, I was like, if he flipping me now, he my little cousin. I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble because I talk a lot of shit. And I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get my ass handed to me. So let me go ahead and pick this up. First day going in now." Uh, went to the locker room, cried like a baby. I ain't want to be there. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Man? <laughs> I don't want to draw no these because like my cousin wasn't there. He's supposed to be there, you know what I'm saying, in class, and he wasn't in class that day. I'm like, damn, I don't know none of these people. Right, right. <laughs> my lame ass. I'm finna be, you know what I'm saying. So, <laughs> what I'm taking karate for martial arts, but uh, it's been love ever since. Like my uh my instructor is my godfather, so like he made me his godson. Like he, I just kept coming to martial arts like more than the usual kid would. And he just like, you know what I'm saying? He just rocked with me, and he knew right. I love football, and that's where that's where my love for r- football really, really came in. Like he put me into it. Like you know what I'm saying? He made me. He took the time out to, you know what I'm saying? Make me better in it. So yeah, martial arts changed my life though, like for the better. And I tell people all the time, you don't have to. I I tell kids all the time, martial arts first day, martial arts boring. Like it's going <laughs> it, it's going to get boring. Like but anything you do. Playing football to me sometimes get boring, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, I ain't got time to argue with nobody. I ain't got time to do this, that, and the third. Martial arts, you got to do the same thing. Ugh, this is a wrist escape. You got to do this 20 times in a row. You got to do a kick 30 times in a row. And I'm going to critique you every time. It's <laughs> never going to be perfect. So, uh, and I tell kids, like, but this is going to make you strong. You want to be, be a better basketball player? Bend your knees. Get, you know what I'm saying? Work on those leg muscles. You want to be a better football player? I got you. Better baseball player? I said, man, you want to be a better lawyer? I bet you I'll make your mind stronger about how, to, how I'm finna yell at you and do all this crazy stuff up in here. So, like, it's, it's love. I wish, yeah, I wish, like, every kid should, every person should experience some type of martial arts or, or karate or something like that because it's, like, really refreshing, though. So, yeah. yeah. You ever had to put the pause on somebody? Uh, Like, on some... I, awesome. but, but this is funny because like <laughs> I we that I, I I hang around a lot of big guys because like when I used to be a bench player in Morgan Park and you know what I'm saying and, and in college when I was a freshman and stuff I used to be a red shirt you had to go stand next to the fat boys the cold guys I used to like bundle <laughs> next to them yeah, I hated y'all so, uh, get away from me <laughs> and I used to be in the middle of them, every, the, every huddle I ain't care I used to like that's that was my joke with uh, all the big dudes and they knew I was coming. <laughs> I used to, but all, but all the big dudes in, in, in school used to wrestle and stuff on in the hallways and stuff. One time before I went to Walmart, they was like, come on, Karate Kid, let's see what you got. I'm like, man, I'm, like I said, when I went to college, I was 5'7", 135. I had to flip uh, one of my linemen. He's like 6'4". They call, his name's Cody, like 6'4", like 270. He's like a big dude from Cali. Ooh. And, like, somehow he, he picked me up. Like, yeah, he did. He, like, but he ain't slammed me hard. He, like, kind of, like. Like, yeah, like he put down. me down, yeah. and then like I somehow flipped him. I don't know how my feet flipped him. out. We was working on the technique in karate. I had like get your hips up and flip. Mm-hmm. It worked, and I ended, <laughs> up, I ended up getting on top of him and like pushing him off and like ran down the hallway. Like, I got to go to Walmart, y'all. Stop playing. <laughs> like, it, that, like I'll never forget that. Like, and one time uh, I was we was playing. I was playing with my cousin uh, Adrian, big brother. Uh, we was in the backyard hooping, and we just started 
playing, play fighting and stuff. And I literally put my foot all the way up to his neck, like, as fast as I could, like, on the movie types, and just stopped it right here. And he's like, bro, that was so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I mean, little stuff like regular boxing fighting, that's 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 fighting. I always, I'm, I'm a fighter. I don't, you know, got in fights here and there and stuff like if you, I ain't never had to kick nobody, so like, no, right. I never kick nobody. No but, roundhouse to the temple. Yeah, yeah, never that. <laughs> but like, just regular uh, punch and elbows, like uh, that little stuff. Yeah, but like, never like no jump flying <laughs> kick through that. No, none of that. <laughs> none of that. Oh, that shit dope. You, so, do you think there's like an age limit to start? Like, I'm 30. Can I go start? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got, we okay. got, we got white belts. Uh, hey, Curtis, old, we in there. Yeah, we got. Old, <laughs> yeah, we got. We got. You get, you get signed up from. And we started three and a half. We get, we walk, we work with kids that were adults that like have trouble walking. You know what I'm saying? So you know what I'm saying? It's like ancient. All right, like, Curtis, get yeah. your get your clean socks, man. We 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 going to take some karate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Have you ever had like a student who who you was just like, yeah, he ain't got it. Oh man, so like you you know how like we kind of rough, we kind of right. hood not hood, but you know what I'm saying from the hood or well, around rough the hood. Around the yeah, edges. you you know what I'm saying. And we got kids that's not like that, you know they they quirky, they they Poindexters, they like I say, I used to be I call myself a lame all the time. They they could be lame, they could, if that's what they want to be. They they coming up the right way, you know what I'm right. saying. I don't got really no rough kids, no no hood kids or nothing like that that got, you know what I'm saying, shot up parents and all that other stuff. So I get kids from two-parent homes. So, so a lot of them don't really have it, but that's the fun of martial arts. Everybody has it in more, uh, martial arts. You you can be unathletic, but best believe I'm going to figure out something you do good. <laughs> like it's from doing a car wheel good, rolling, falling, kicking. We do, a, we do a wide variety of stuff to, like, pull out the best in you. So I'm going to find what you're good at, you know what I'm saying? What's like your favorite like technique or thing? Uh, I like the I like weapons. I like uh, uh, the big old bamboo stick. It's called we call it a, a, a bong, not the bong. You should, uh, <laughs> but we call it's called you can call it a bow staff, a staff or a bong. We call it a bong in uh, ours. Uh, a lot of kids like the nunchucks. We call them jubongs. I hate those, but I know how to work them. <laughs> sword. I hate that. I hate working with the sword. I like the sword, but I. When you, when you, you know, everybody, most of the world, predominantly right hand. Mm -hmm. I broke my, I broke my right hand in uh, high school, and when I was first learning the sword, I had to learn everything on the left hand. So, uh -huh. and that really irritated me because, like, it just didn't feel right. Yeah, it didn't feel right, but I'm, <laughs> I got real good at it, so it was cool. It was cool. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, man. That's love. I do it literally six days a week. Sunday, my only off day from doing it. So, yeah. Man, I, you said you got three, three kids. Yes, sir. When did you start? When I start what? Having kids. I oh, 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 oh. When I was, <laughs> I was a senior in college, uh, 21, 22, my son is, my oldest is eight. So, yeah, 22. He just turned eight on, in January. So, he do he does it, too. Uh, he lives in my, uh, St. Louis, though. So, while I went to school in Missouri, I was a rolling stone, y'all. Three kids, three mother children. Don't be like me. It'd be like that. Yeah. <laughs> they all well taken care of. That's, that's, the, that's the good part. Man, I'm, were you scared? Uh... Nah, because my son, Mama, we, we, we were in a relationship for a long time, and we uh, we kind of held each other down, you know what I'm saying? After, like, I was kind of scared after we broke up and after I had to figure out how to be a man and how to go from St. Louis to Chicago to right. get him and all this stuff, like, and get, you know, at one point my daughter stayed, she stayed in Jeff City, so that's six hours from here, and St. Louis four hours from here, so I had to always figure out how to go further down to get one child, so... It helped me grow up a lot. Like, I, <laughs> I, I, like I, man, you never know what's going through my head because it's I got to deal with so many souls. You know, my three kids, they moms, like my mom, my sisters. You know, I got right, a, right. I got a niece that's turning 14, her birthday on Valentine's Day. So, oh, my God, I just, <laughs> I'm, every, I'm everywhere right now. I'm surprised I got no gray hair. Uh, you plan to have us more? If more to buy that big. <laughs> man, if I do have another one, it's going to be a, a – some year, a couple years from now, I can't get too old. Cause then I don't want my youngest, my oldest child, to be that much older. But yeah, if I do, probably so. But I don't know. I, I ain't. Uh, I'm 30, bro. I ain't got none. I'm like, do I want something now? I'm like, I be feeling like I waited too late. I'm like, damn, I'm 30. It ain't too like, late. <laughs> mama, I think my mom, my, no, nah, cause my mama had me when she was 30. She's 60. So my, uh, but I know a lot. Of, I know a lot of old, like young grandparents though. You know right, I mean? right. 
but you yeah, know, nah, it ain't never too late, man. Go ahead. Now, nah, when you're ready, though, now nah, I ain't gonna say go ahead. Oh, hey, <laughs> tr- trust and believe. Uh, my mom instilled in me a long time ago. Mm. <laughs> my yeah. pullout game is impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people all the time, a pump and a half, you straight, you wait that half, that's the baby, man. I'm yeah, telling you. Oh don't, oh, don't I know. <laughs> you wait that half, that's the baby. Yep, pump man. and a half, fellas. Take note, write it down, take a picture. It's too fast. <laughs> Trust me, you, you, you live to fight another day. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's switch gears. Let's talk about this girl with this goddamn Gorilla Glue. In a damn hell, bro. I'm so tired of seeing that. <laughs> and it's crazy because, like, stuff like that, when I see stuff like that, I just keep scrolling past it because I'm – usually I had it or keep scrolling past because I don't I, – it, it's just – I don't know. I get it. <laughs> Somebody posted uh, the difference on, like, the, the different oils you put in your hair and your – you know what I'm saying? But right. I don't know. And I, it was matter of fact, it was a dude that just put a the yeah the cup go, yeah he on did the, the it was, yeah cup. and he, they say he about to lose some of his lips so like people got to stop doing stuff for I mean so what she she uh somebody started a GoFundMe for her yep. I don't know if she and started I will just say someone started a GoFundMe for her and it got what like twenty thousand dollars it's going crazy I seen that that I thought I did see I saw it, like, it, was, it was up there it, I don't know how much like, it got it was like twenty thousand dollars. And she getting um, some hair surgery or something, right? Oh, uh, it was a, it was a uh, black guy. Did it for free. Uh, so she I don't gets, know if he did it for free. No, he did. I read that. He did it for free. So she gets to keep the money? Right. <laughs> I, man, let, me, let me jump off your balcony real quick. No, nah, nah, it ain't I that far. You survive. You'll be back up. I, I know. I'll, sh- I'll break a pinky toe. So they yeah, can, nah, they can sue me, boy. I ain't suing you. They're going to give us $20,000 of no money, and we going to split go it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You shot to knock the icicles down. Yeah, yep. You was doing the karate kid. <laughs> It, man, cause I, just, oh, I just don't understand. Did you see the uh, the guy that the, the stri- was streaking in the Super Bowl? Yeah, they say he put down fifty thousand. You saw the thing? Yeah, he yeah. put he put uh, yeah fifty thousand dollar bet that someone was going to streak in the Super Bowl, and, then and he he hit it for like three seventy four. Yeah, and then they say he can't three hundred and seventy four thousand dollars. They say he can't get in that though. How come? I, I didn't read up on that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm pretty. They I'm, said the the sports books. Uh, I think because they said he. He did it himself, it yeah. right? I'm gonna say that has to be against yeah, some of the goddamn rules. Right. I'm like, you should have shut your goddamn mouth. Because if that was the case, I'm, I'm going to right. If you if, if you can control the outcome, that's yeah. that's dumb. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, you gonna get arrested, but if you get a three hundred goddamn thousand dollar outcome, I'm shut you, up. I, I'm out. I'm out of jail, and I'm gonna get that shit of spawns off my record, and I'm gonna continue my yeah. fucking life. Six figures off a bet that I control. Like, <laughs> to be in a predicament to even put $50,000 down. That's, that's what crazy. I said. Like, like, what did the, he do? Like, the ability to have $50,000 to place on a goddamn bet. Yeah. Like, ah, damn. I was trying to, I'm trying to see if I can get into the little fan. Do I be saying people turn $5? Man, that be broiling them, man. Yeah, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get like them, man. Man. I'm oh, sorry, man. I don't. I don't. I, you, you, I'm you, not a better. I don't gamble at all. So that's what that's the thing. Like, my coworkers like are putting me on to it, right? Because they was like, mm-hmm. "Oh yeah, it's a it's a four game parlay." I'm like, "All right, I, I understand the English language, so I'm guessing that's four games. You bet something has to happen, mm-hmm. right?" They was like, "Oh yeah, it was plus three thousand. I'm like, "All right, fuck that, man." Like, <laughs> <laughs> See, I got it, that part now, but like, I'm just like. I, I I always tell people I can't bet on nobody. I can't bet on nothing other than me fighting or, <laughs> or me playing football. Cause that's what that's the two things in life I know I can control: me fighting and me playing football. I, like I, the I, only the only type of betting I've ever done is like a heads up bet, right? If, if we was to bet on Super Bowl, like hey, yeah. ten dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do little Brady stuff go like win, that. right? That, that's about it, bro. But to like put it down as a real wager and to, yeah, oh, to, yeah. to know what the fuck going on. To, to bet like fifty dollars oh, yeah. that KD finna hit three threes this game, like <laughs> I see. Oh my god! And I be like, man, it was this, crazy because I, I the I, I was finna bet like on Zach Levine or, and uh, Kobe hitting the two the more than three threes in the game yeah. the, when they hit eight threes the other day. Damn! I put like five dollars. I could have won like sixty five dollars on each of them. And I'm like. Nigga, they not gonna hit these motherfucking shots. Only because you for the bet. You're right, exactly. That's, that's how I feel every time. I, and then I, I made a hundred dollar bet that the Bears was gonna make the playoffs when the, after they was five and one. 
You know, after they went, they went to the, the losing streak. So I sent my homie $50. I'm like, as, as soon as they out the playoffs, out the playoff run, I'm going to send you the rest of the $50. Because, <laughs> like, I'm like, I just can't stand betting like that, bro. Nah. We end up making the playoffs. He had to send me the the, the 100 back plus the 50, the 50 I sent. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I'm like, man, I'm good on this. I, this is too stressful too for stress. me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it at all, bro. Like, it's fun. It's good for y'all or whatnot. But I'm like, y'all can bet me with some push-ups. I can do it. <laughs> oh, faithfully. I'll do them on call, too. Like, I'm a big dude. I wouldn't even bet it. <laughs> <laughs> like, give me a few days, bro. Exactly. I'll bang, I bang him out. Give me a few days. I, I, I lost 25 push-up bet on the Super Bowl. My homie hit me up on duo. I'm like, I need them push-ups. <laughs> his kid's sitting over his shoulder like, what are you doing? <laughs> he lost, son. Right. He lost. <laughs> pay your bet. <laughs> mm. That shit crazy. But, no, nah, you know, she's trying to sue the gr- uh, girl with the Gorilla Glue. Apparently, she not. Uh, see, that's what y'all was saying. That, that, that was, man, that's it was, crazy, it was very reported that she that's was trying crazy. to sue. So I figured, no, I figured some lawyer seen this and was like, "Hey, hey, girl, we can sue." Like, <laughs> you I got had, you. had we, to, we you know, people in her. But ears. like, it's the it's, it's all in the fine print. You know what I'm saying? And people don't read that fine print about. I know, but the company they yeah, lawyers yeah. do. Oh, Fuck yeah. you, me. <laughs> what they say, you want to put something, you want to uh, don't want a black person to know it, put it in writing. Put it in writing. Yeah. Boy, but how many times we uh when we was kids before we had cell phones we sat in the bathroom and read the whole entire back of the label of everything in the back. <laughs> we used to get uh two K games and Madden. We used to come with the little booklet. Yeah, yeah. To, <laughs> how you spin move? How you jump? Yeah, and they don't even come with them booklets no more. I miss them. Yo, you you, you uh you play video games? Yeah, I play uh I play a little Madden. I play a little two K, but like. What's your preferred console? Xbox. Yeah, yeah right. that's why I, I grew up on. I mean, I grew up on all of them, but like when when. We got four kids in the house. We had to pick one system. You know what I'm saying? My brother was like, "We gonna get the Xbox." I'm like, "Okay." Right. You know, so I ran with it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got the new one yet. I'm waiting till after I graduate. That's gonna be my graduation present to myself. So. Oh, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. I ain't get the new one yet either. I'm this lab Xbox One. I had got like when it first came out. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But this one, I don't. I like I got the money. Yeah, I go you know get what I'm it, saying. But yeah. I don't feel like it. I just don't see the point right now. Yeah, exactly. You know when when the shit really when everybody jump over, then I you know what I'm saying. That's yeah, where I'm gonna jump over. Uh, but like now, I ain't bought no new game. I told myself I won't go buy no new games though. I'm like, oh yeah. I, sure. From now on, any game I buy, you know, I will wait till I get the new console. Wait. Mm-hmm. So I ain't got the new Madden. People come over here, but oh man, what that Madden twenty? Uh, yeah. I'm uh, not- hey, <laughs> hey, hey, I ain't. This my first time buying Madden since Larry Fitzgerald or Calvin Johnson was on the cover. Whichever one was the most recent, this my first time buying that. And I buy, I buy sports games every two years because like, yeah. I'm not finna spend. Like, for a roster update. How much these? <laughs> how much these games cost? Like sixty, eighty dollars now? Like hell no, nah, man. Roster I got three crazy. kids. I got to take, <laughs> after they're taken care of. If I got a couple pennies to pinch on myself, cool. But they, yeah. And they finna uh, do NCAA again. Oh yeah, I'm you excited yeah, for I'm, that. I'm, I'm gonna get that shit. Yeah, I want to know who gonna be on the cover though, or what school or whatever, whoever. Uh, they say they like two years out though. <sighs> right, look, <laughs> the fine print. <laughs> I didn't read it. I definitely didn't read it. Yeah. They had just inked the deal that they they can do it, but uh, like early reports say they like two years out. Oh, man. So we won't get an NCAA game to twenty twenty three. Oh man, like at the earliest. <laughs> I was yeah. geek too, but I'm like, oh shit, okay. I, 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 I thought yeah. worst case scenario, we have to wait a year. You know what I'm saying? But we, we looking at two. But I'm like, man, I was geek, and it's crazy though, cause my little brother, he four years younger than me. Mm-hmm. He put me on to the NCAA game. Oh man, that's that, that's that's the one of the best. I think that's the best football game, bro. Right I can't there. get into college sports though, for real. No, no, it's always shifting. I love you know what? It. To me, uh, I just be honest. It's amateur hour, right? I love that shit. I, 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 I mean, people have told me several times, yeah, like, yeah. like, bro, it's, it's the amount of the amount of games, right? The increases the amount of something spectacular. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I, I get it, You're right? I understand, <laughs> but I, I easily get frustrated when I see like easy plays get fucked up. Oh yeah, and I'm yeah. like. Fuck. Uh, amateur hour, like you said. Yeah, to like, me, this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like you know, people like people like Chris Dalton. He don't even watch. Uh, he I don't. I know he don't watch. He he watches Little Brother. And I don't think. It, but yeah, he don't watch no NFL football. Yeah, no. Nah. Like he probably watch a game here or there. But like, nope. I'm like, I'm like, uh, you know about uh Marcus Peters? Da, da, da. He's like, who? I'm like the cornerback. He's like, who? I'm like, and you know, he's one of the better football players. We right, know. right. He he's know. known. He just he, but he'll play it on the game, but he just don't know. He don't know these people, but uh, <laughs> he ain't gonna watch it. He'll play it though. All right. So, what's your uh, way too early prediction for 
NCAA football champion. NCAA football. Alabama are always going to be up there. I mean, um, there's always going to be a contender. It's going to be Alabama. You think they're going to stay a contender once Nick Saban leave? When he leave? I'm just saying. Oh, shit. <laughs> Man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta see, you gotta see that we got when that when that when we cross that bridge. But cause like he always getting a new coach. Matter of fact, I think he got a who is that? I mean, yeah, but when, when Bill you, O'Ryan. When you have a great guy. system, your coaches yeah. are going to get head coaching every jobs. Every year, man, he he recycle coach every year. But like I think, yeah, they they always gonna be they gonna top. They gonna take a step back when he when he leave. You know what I'm saying? Like Florida did when Urban Meyer or yeah. something like that. Probably, but like as long as he healthy. As long as they, why you think he ain't ever take the step to go to the NFL? You know, I think what well, he was he was at what, when we was younger, he was at Miami or something like that. Some, then then like he went that. to L O L S U and, and Bama, whatever his little sur- carousel went. And bro, he making <laughs> boy, man, he making more than some co- I, my, more than in, some NFL coach, yeah. yeah. And then like uh, I remember one ESPN thing they was doing, they showed us his house. Like I think he got a house in Alabama, like right off the water. That man ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Ain't going nowhere. <laughs> My, you, he's, he's stuck and he's, he's staying. So, like, uh, but like people like Urban Meyer, you see, he makes that jump. He go, he going to Jacksonville. So, I don't know. So what you think they, the NFL got against black head coaches? Man, I don't know. Cause, like, uh, what's that man name? The. Uh, McCown got head coaching uh, interview, yeah, yeah, that's and, uh, and, um, <laughs> and Brian left, which ain't getting nothing. And you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. But, like, I have no idea. Oh, wait, didn't bro. they just confuse Brian Leftwich for Ty Bowles? Some reported. So. Yo, that yeah. was, I'm like, yo, come on. That's crazy, man. Like, come on. This is, that's your job. Right, to know. Like, the, and, they, and they probably had their names in front of the damn thing. I mean, man. I, I was just going to say, they look different. But I know, to, to, to I guess, to white people, all black people look alike. Because right. if you ask me to tell the difference between the Asian, I'd probably be confused, too. Yeah, no, um, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I ain't going to stunt. You know, no offense to none of the Asians. Some of y'all look different. Uh, but, <laughs> but you know, so I, it's like I be trying to sympathize mm-hmm. just a little bit. Mm-hmm. But then you think about it, bro. You are a sports reporter. Yeah, that's you are. Job. You're at the fucking Super Bowl. Oh, like, <laughs> yo, you supposed to have notes written out. You supposed to have little stickies and everything. Man, you you and got stuff. technology in you. No, you got a whole computer in your hand. Right, you could have typed the night. Uh, coaching, coast, look, look coaching, him up right. real quick. <laughs> Box coach, co- Bucks coaches, 30 <laughs> seconds before you ask your question. <laughs> you a fan of uh, T.I.? Man, I haven't even. Re- I, I used to be. I mean, I haven't read up on the whole whatever he doing. Yeah, I mean, like, that's that's why I'm getting that. Yeah, whole... I, have, I have not even read up on the. Like, All right, Curtis, can can you can you fill fill us in? So I, I I'm gonna give what I understand of it. Right. Mm. Apparently, uh, some women, multiple women, correct, are saying that him and Tiny. Are uh are they grooming them? No, or or they just like they had three too many women, but they just groomed some of the women. Oh, okay. oh, they on that Darren Sharper shit. <laughs> like, ooh, that's crazy. And I'm like, I, I always find it like hard to believe that, uh, like a celebrity of their stature would have to drug a female to do anything. Man, cause I, see stories like that be so sticky because like it's truth to everything. Maybe they trying to make they probably. I don't think they. I don't, I don't look I don't if the girl decides to pop a pill, come kick it with them. Yeah, I'm, 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 that's what I'm saying. I don't think they, <laughs> they like, man, y'all gotta pop these drugs and we gonna maybe they probably offered them some money and they didn't get paid. So that maybe that's like, <laughs> man, I don't know. But I don't when wanna, money get funny, stories come yeah, out, huh? I don't want to, you know what I'm saying, belittle somebody's situation, nothing like that. But I don't, whew, that's a sticky situation. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying, you don't, you, you don't ever want to be like. A girl's a flat out liar. Yeah, right? true. You know what I'm saying? You want to hear their story. Yeah. But then, like, you got something to take her? Oh. But then, like, I mean, this is just totally away from that. Uh, you hear, like, the rape allegations and stuff like that. But the detriment that happens with a fake <laughs> yeah. rape allegation is it's, it's insurmountable, bro. Like, if somebody accused. Any one of us a rape, bro. It's that's it. Oh yeah, it's over that's with. it. Ain't no it's professional over. career, no. and like w- just just the accusation oh, yeah, yeah, alone, yeah, right? I personally feel like if somebody falsely accused somebody of rape and it comes out to be a complete total lie, they get <laughs> the time yeah. of a rape charge. They should straight they up. Should I agree? I agree. Like if they would have called. 15 years for this rape charge. You got 15, 15. years for lying about yeah. this rape charge. Yeah. Straight you up. You just tore somebody's life up and they got to restart. So why shouldn't you have to For real. Yeah, I'm like, no, sure. no, nah, nah, shorty. 15 years. Yeah.
Fuck. <laughs> on, right there. Fuck you mean mm-hmm. just like that. It was like heading out ten days in high ten days. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to space. <laughs> That's it. That's all. Ten days. All right, man. We coming up about towards the end. You got mm-hmm. any hot takes? Anything you want to talk about? No, no, I think uh we gotta get the school system right and these kids right in the school. Like I one thing I, I I'm not against I don't I, I'm I'm for whatever's the best, but we all need to figure it out together on open up schools and getting these kids back in school because e learning is tough. So uh I just did one of my I'm doing my student teacher, I did just did my first uh lesson plan today. Uh and I don't, I can't point out none of my kids from a can of paint because I've never seen their face. And I work with, I'm working on, with a predominantly Hispanic school, you know what I'm saying, uh, away from my kid, my normal kids. So I don't know them from a can of paint, but they participate in my lesson plan. But it's just kind of hard because, like, I feel like e-learning turning our kids into robots. So, like, they don't have any real emotion anymore. So we got to we gotta get it together, y'all. So do you, let's get do you it think going. it's going to um – be difficult to get kids back into a school setting. That we major- nah, it's just got to be ma- they comfortable. All right, you, gotta, you know what? Better yet, comfortable. Talk about uh, the vaccine. Mm. How, how, what, what do you feel about the whole COVID situation? Get, trying to get these kids back in school, and then I mean, I'm pretty sure you you're well versed in you know the teachers saying they don't want to mm. take vaccines. So a lot of the teachers at the school I'm working with now, the school before I go do my whole student t- student teaching at before I have to leave. Uh, a lot of them do want the vaccine, uh, and then some of them don't. I don't. I mean, because, like, I was a cod liver oil baby. I don't know if anybody know how mm-hmm. we used to get a spoonful <laughs> every morning, every, like, not a little spoonful. Nah, the, the biggest yeah. spoon yeah. that was not the, the one Kool-Aid that you, spoon. The one you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one, the, the, the big silver one. I used to get a big spoonful every day, every morning, every night, and I feel like that really helped me get healthy, you know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't really get sick, you know, so. I'm not gonna get it. I mean, my brother is—he's a pilot, and his his uh, fiance is a nurse. So I mean, they both told me I should, but I'm I'm pretty just gonna wait and see. You know what I'm saying? But like, I think everybody, a lot of people are gonna get it. They just gotta see like what's the the kick of Man, it. I was just gonna say I'm gonna treat the vaccine like a new Xbox. Once they fix, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Once, once they I, fix once all the bugs, once I see like, maybe. you know what I'm because I know some people that got it. They they still in their arms got swollen and stuff like that, just like a regular shot. So me, I mean, I'm a healthy person. I'm just gonna wait. I'm just ready to take these damn masks off, cause <laughs> <laughs> man, that that shit kills me. But like I said, I'm just gonna wear it until. We can't wear it. We ain't got to wear it no more. Right. I, it's it's kind of like just do it, right? Yeah, and it's, like, cra- it's crazy because, like, like, you could be in a room. You could be in a room and around uh, 20,000 people that don't got it, and all us got on this damn mask, but we just got to do it because that's what they said do. So, that's... Nah, I was... So, I, I mean, I do stand-up. Mm-hmm. I was doing open... I'm still fairly young in my mm-hmm. stand-up career, so, like, I'm considered with uh, an open micer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't... I mean, I've done shows, but I don't, I don't regularly do shows. Mm-hmm. So, I, I just got to show up and do mics, right? It was a mic in the city where all but one comic got COVID from this one mic. <laughs> That's crazy. And it was like, so you think you don't need to wear masks? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so like the the comedy, it's a comedy club right down the street from my house, and they mm. just opened up and they do it on Mondays. And that's when everybody was talking about how everybody from that one mic had got COVID, mm. except one person. Mm. I'm like, damn. Cause I know at this comedy club right here, after every comic is we the the host be like, hey, wipe the mic down, mm-hmm. and then the host get up there and wipe it down again, and then the next person come up. You know what I'm saying? So it's about cleansing, like man. for real, yo. That's and then yeah, <laughs> I had seen the thing a while ago. People was like, I can't wait for this to be over. I'm tired of washing my hands. I'm like, <laughs> look, look at my hands. Ashy, ashy, ever. And I, I, like I said, teach martial arts. I wash these joints every three seconds, and we got hand sanitizer all over the place. Like even before uh, pre-pandemic, I used to tell people when I, uh, we got antibacterial soap in my school, but. I used to tell people at when I go home, I used to go home and wash the hood off my hands. Like <laughs> literally, the hood of 79th Street, I used to wash it off my hands. I used to like enjoy doing that because like making my hands ashy, so I know I'm clean. Because <laughs> <laughs> y'all don't understand, man. Working with like kids, man. You, right. I mean, they the see, germ carriers. You, you see, ki- you see shoestrings. Walk. I used to have to take the kids, not take them to the bathroom, but like watch, watch them come in and go out the bathroom, and then their shoes be untied and. <laughs> 
just to watch some shoestrings go across, piss all day. I just, I, I talk, that's one thing I never do for a kid. I, I'm not tying a shoe. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> said, you just dragged that shit through the kid's I, bathroom. Yeah, yeah man. I'm straight. Yeah, it ain't your, enough Your shoestring was that. white. It's yellow now. <laughs> and that was just from this morning. Exactly. <laughs> yes, bro. I've seen so many new pairs of Jordans get like that. Oh, my God. Yeah, bro. That's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just going through my notes here. Somebody asked, so I, I what I'm gonna start doing is mm. asking what people want us to talk about. Mm. And somebody said, uh, "Who you think should have been in office, Trump or Biden?" Mm. See, well, I'm be honest, me, I'm ig- well, I, I want to be a history teacher, but like when it comes to politics, I it really don't. I feel like it don't matter to me as a the middle class black man because I mean I feel like I'm just in the middle of America you know right what I'm saying? right and it I don't mean, really trickle down you know what I'm saying I, 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 I that's how I feel and then, you know people do make points that like, make me be like hmm, you right yeah you right but like <sighs> whoever I, I feel like Chris I mean Chris did make a good point about Trump but I heard Biden got some shit with his son and Kamala not the best person ever but I mean I mean but who really who, ain't got who, no past I'm about to say who really ain't got no dirt and who really you know in politics saying? everybody do I'm about to say, and, and I've been watching Trump so I don't know if anybody ever watched uh, the show The Apprentice when he used to have that TV yeah. show or that uh, you're fired that's what right. his famous line I right. used to watch the shit and Donald Trump is like a good businessman so like I mean, I don't. I, don't. I think I think one. That's how he got elected. In yeah. The first place, oh yeah. Right? They they was looking. My, we America were, was looking at the money aspect of. And, and I think as as a country we was tired of politics. Mm-hmm. We was tired of politicians, right? Yeah. We was tired of them, you know, twisting words, spinning it around, mm-hmm. and just I guess I want to say like lied to in a nice way, mm-hmm. right? So it was like, all right, America is in debt. Let's get a business person, right? Yeah. They just they was just looking for something different. You know yeah, what I'm saying? That's like, show. all right, I'm tired of going to this restaurant. Let's go to another one, but. A president is different, like. <laughs> and I think because uh, you, you gotta go to this restaurant every day for four years. <laughs> I think I heard because uh, one uh, another reason why they went with we went with Trump uh, initially, uh, America as a whole. Now we as you know me individual. But, yeah, but <laughs> I think because like uh, Obama didn't um, he didn't back Biden uh, back Biden at first. He was backing uh, Hillary at first. So uh, yeah, yeah. So he that, split split yeah. the Democrats. Yeah. So yeah, they was we was all unsure about some stuff. So that's what it is. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm I'm a firm believer that uh, politics start locally. Mm, oh yeah, um, we gotta start. We gotta take over these these uh, aldermen's and the little stuff. Like that's why I do know about politics and that. And and when people talk to me about that stuff, I'm like, unless y'all trying to take over these aldermen's and and why you don't run for aldermen? The little stuff. I mean, I gotta learn something about that stuff. No, you first. Don't. I mean, I I, I, mean, <laughs> I gotta like you know what I'm saying get you know what I'm saying get my foot with my feet wet. But like, I, I, is that something that you would do or consider? I, I feel like you ain't never thought about it. I feel like me being a football coach. Uh, I mean, what do you mean? You're a leader. I mean, but I mean, <laughs> me being a football coach, I, I could. I feel like I could change the community being a football coach more than the alderman can, damn there. Because like some aldermen don't know shit about shit, and then you can go to, well, Lexi Spurlock when he was at Morgan Park, he helped change the community. Like it's just like if you're a community leader, like you don't have to like have that title, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. To do it, you just have to have like the partnership, you know what I'm saying, type shit. So I feel like I feel I, like I feel like along with the actual leadership capability and respect of the community, mm. uh, a person being able to actually shape or form how the community is ran is very important, right? Mm-hmm. Um like you said, a lot of people live in their neighborhood don't know they alderman. Mm. And they alderman is <laughs> all he all he care about is right. these Ten blocks. Yep. And yep. don't know nobody. It's I'm like, that's crazy. Stuff, so yeah. if, if if that's the case, who voted for him? If y'all don't know y'all old alderman, then who voted for him? Nobody. <laughs> the, the, the ten people. The, the ten people around. And his like, his neighbors. Ten. You know what yep. I'm saying? Nah, you 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 got to hold that person accountable. And to me, and then then it trickles up. It's a documentary on um, Hulu, and they was talking about the mayor elections, like uh, how all Amer- how all the mayor elections got a uh, Gary McCarthy and. Uh, I forgot the one black lady, African la- black lady name uh, who was running. And this was young, one young guy that's like our age, but they were showing like how you get votes and stuff. How yeah. Will, Willie uh, Willie Wilson and stuff. How he was uh-huh. getting his votes and stuff. How you gotta sit in front of like city hall at like six o'clock in the morning and with the put with all the signs and stuff. And Willie Wilson, this is funny because during the thing he had like some actual like bums or something like do sit out there for him. He's like, I you know Willie Wilson used to own McDonald's. He's like, I'll be back with some McDonald's every time he was he was uh. 
talking up like his his crew of people he's working with. Like, I'll be back with some McDonald's or something, y'all. Y'all like the McDonald's? That's good enough for y'all. I'm like, Willie, yeah, funny. Hey, Willie Wilson got his own um, party. He do. <laughs> so like this this past uh, election, when you looked at his name, it didn't say Republican or Democrat. Oh, wow. It said Willie Wilson party. <laughs> I remember, I think a couple of elections ago, my mom was like, go ahead and vote that black man in. I'm like, Ma, what you, I mean, come on now. <laughs> no, nah, it's, it's, maybe it's we should have, though. Uh, hey, look, <laughs> it wouldn't have hurt. Yeah, I mean, it it's, it's a, it's a quite of a surge of young people in politics, for mm-hmm. real, for real. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I think for us, where we grew up, you know, once we uh, buy the block and we move back into those neighborhoods, we have to take those political yeah, positions true. because those are people who uh help hire cops yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. that all the men could tell i don't want this cop in my neighborhood yeah. you know that, what i'm that saying caps, uh, program yeah. right you know what i'm saying so like people complain about that mm-hmm. like oh we got cops in our neighborhood who ain't never been to our neighborhood yeah, that's okay then scary. who allowed them to be there right you have no control over who cpd hires right mm-hmm, but right. you have control over who you allow to police yeah, your neighborhood that's very true but you as an individual might not necessarily be able to speak up but your alderman can yeah your alderman is yeah. in those city council meetings and all the complaints that would have maybe yeah. fallen on deaf ears or when you go write them in they just throw them away right. your alderman go go to right, city right. hall he, he there fight look for yeah. <laughs> Officer so and so is this this and that. Either y'all fire him, get him out of my neighborhood. I don't want to see him. Right. And then you know, with that being said, then you know that's it. Again, it it trickles up at that point. Um, I don't know, man. I, I really hope we are able to live long enough to see the fruits of our labor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To see the community change. We got to like. <laughs> I am not, because I talked to my granny, and she talked about how black people couldn't go to Evergreen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. you couldn't mm-hmm. even drive through Evergreen. Yeah, she, she, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Now, I mean, you really still can't. But still. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. you, you really still can't. You, you go get pulled over. Don't be doing the speed limit. You speed. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Especially down kids. We collapse. Boy. Curtis, you got anything? All right, man. You, you got anything else? Nah, man, let's fix these school systems. Takes a village to raise these child, ch- children. I'm all about the kids, man. All right, all you want to tell the people they can follow you or uh, all plug some of us? All I got is Facebook. My name on Facebook is Jamon Allen. If y'all want to be my friend, yeah, <laughs> me, yeah. <laughs> I ain't got no other social media. I am plain Jane and Lane. Hey, man. I heard you old if you got a Facebook now. I'm old as fuck then. I had, <laughs> I had Facebook since 06, and I'm proud Bro, of that. For real, for real. <laughs> I got rid of Twitter, Insta- was, not, Instagram, never had a snap. Yeah. I was I was talking to some of my coworkers. I, I'm always trying to plug my comedy or whatever. And I was like, oh, yeah, just um, have me on Facebook. This girl say, Facebook? How old are you? You got a Facebook? Uh, that's the first thing I asked. Bitch, if I'm I 30. Ask, uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be 30, too. <laughs> what do you mean? And yes, I do have a Facebook. Right. That's the, if, I, if I ask anything, that's all I'm asking. I'm like, I'm <laughs> all right. Make sure y'all following us. Third Post Media on all platform. Post like your heartbeat. Not post plus. None of that other stuff y'all be typing in. Third uh, post media. Make sure y'all follow me on all platforms. Simply just will. Uh, I don't know how much easier I can make that. But uh. <laughs> all right, y'all, we out. <laughs>